The vacuum triode amplifier invented by Floyd Sweet consists of two ferrite magnets and two to four coreless wire coils. It is self-powered in the preferred configuration and produces an excess of 1 kW of 120 VRMS 60 Hz power in the form of energy that resembles electricity. This energy is referred to as negative energy. The VTA development history, its anti-gravity characteristics, negative energy properties, and some of the personalities involved are discussed. This is a story of Floyd Sweet's trials and tribulations involving a mystery wrapped in an enigma. God revealed to Floyd, God revealed to Floyd sufficient information to build a machine to provide energy that resembles electricity. However, God did not provide solutions to the frustrating string of problems that would surface in converting the idea into a working device. There are several people in this story that have provided help and some who have hindered. When Tom Bearden met Floyd, the device Floyd had developed was producing a few watts of alternating current at 28 volts. Tom saw in Floyd's device the physical embodiment of a principle he had theorized many years before. Tom had never designed or constructed a physical device to access this elusive energy source. Tom's name for the extraction process is four-wave phase conjugate mixing. The energy source is the intense non-cohered energy that is thought to be present everywhere in the universe. Various researchers through the years have given this energy different names, such as zero-point energy, gravity field energy, radiant energy, and others. Tom Bearden gave Floyd's device the name Vacuum Triode Amplifier or VTA. The machine provides a small amount of its output fed back to the equivalent of a grid which gates or coheres a large amount of energy which appears at the device output terminal as something that resembles electricity. Negative Electricity This energy can be utilized by devices designed to convert electricity to light, heat, or mechanical work or anything else for which normal electricity is used. The properties of this energy, although superficially resembling the 120 VRMS 60 Hz power we normally use, are unique and sufficiently different from conventional electricity, so that it should be classified as an entirely new energy form. It will require careful extended study by a wide range of people in order to document its properties in the manner scientists have done with conventional electricity. Tom Bearden refers to this energy as negative energy, and he states that negative time must be utilized. In negative time according to Bearden, gravity is a repulsive force. Floyd's experiments demonstrated that the VTA loses weight in proportion to the amount of generated negative energy. This was carefully documented by Floyd on a kitchen scale. The machine weight was observed decreasing with increased load in a quite orderly fashion until a point was suddenly reached when Floyd heard an immense sound, as if he were at the center of a giant whirlwind but without actual air movement. The sound was heard by his wife Rose in another room of their apartment and was heard by others outside the apartment. The experience was very frightening and the experiment has not been repeated. Some observers of the light emanating from ordinary 120 volt 100 watt incandescent bulbs powered by the VTA claim the light is different, softer than normal incandescent light. The VTA magnets and coils when powering loads of over a kilowatt become cold and temperatures of 20 degrees Fahrenheit below ambient have been observed. Similar reports of below ambient temperature of energy machine components have been reported by other inventors, such as John Bedini and John R. R. Searle. When the VTA output what, first an extremely brilliant flash occurred. When the wires involved were examined shortly afterward, they were found covered with frost. Unfortunately this also caused the VTA magnet to fracture and the machine ceased operating. In one instance the machine operation ceased during a local earthquake. The physical shacking was not believed to be sufficiently severe to disrupt the machine magnet slash coil relative placement or physical shock to the magnet such as a hammer blow might impart. The best speculation is that the machine was affected by the intense electromagnetic pulse known to originate from earthquakes. Conventics. Conventional instruments used to measure volts, amps, or watts appear to correlate machine output as coupled to loads, but only up to approximately 1 kW. Above that value they may indicate zero or some other value not related to the known actual load. Floyd's attempts to use conventional electrical design formulas relating number of coil turns, amp turns on drive coils, and any other parameter to predict observed outputs have all resulted in failures with calculations. Empirical formulas based on actual tests have been documented. Observation of machine output voltage of approximately 120 VRMS while the load was changed in 100 watt increments from 100 watts to 1000 watts has shown no observable output voltage change, which suggests an extremely low internal equivalent impedance. The 20 gauge magnet wire in the output coils consisting of several hundred turns has significant DC resistance which is not correlated with the unvarying output terminal voltage at different loads. It is speculated that this energy does not travel within the copper wire or its passage through the copper wire does not generate a voltage drop, a most useful feature when transferring energy from one place to another.
One frustrating aspect of the VTA has been its failures, evidenced by the output voltage slowly decaying to zero over a few seconds or minutes. There also have been spontaneous instances of the voltage rising above 120 VRMS as observed by the increased lamp load bank brightness. The voltmeters, ammeter, and power meter did not correlate with the brightness change except when the machine would the fail to produce any power. Many times the VTA was normally left on powering a lamp load bank 24 hours a day. During a period of time when it appeared to be functioning properly all day long, Floyd got up at 3 a.m. to go to the bathroom. As he walked past the room where the VTA was located, he noticed that the lights appeared dim. He measured the voltage at 70 VRMS. Being tired at the moment, he returned to bed. The next morning when he rose, the voltage was back to the normal 120 VRMS and stayed there all day. The next night Floyd got up at The voltage was measured at 85 VRMS. Floyd returned to bed. The voltage was normal the entire next day. A possible clue to this anomaly has appeared in an article by E.W. Silvertooth titled Motion Through the Ether where Silvertooth describes a dual-path laser interferometer experiment that conclusively demonstrated the presence of an ether that flows through our portion of the universe at greater than the speed of light with its vector in the direction of the constellation Leo. Floyd's VTA may be orientation sensitive to this ether velocity vector. Following footsteps on July 5, 1995, Floyd Sweet suffered a fatal heart attack at the age of 83. A couple of weeks before his death, Sweet said that the automotive industry was testing his power his power unit for use in cars, and that they had a unit running for 5,000 hours. He said he was dealing with people at General Motors, but no one has been able to confirm Sweet's claims. The VTA itself is bogged down in legal problems. But Tom Bearden, who put much of his own time and money into the project, hopes that the VTA can be resurrected so that the world will realize what a pioneer Floyd Sweet was. And despite the confusion surrounding Sweet's affairs at the time of his death, other researchers are continuing this line of research. Confusion and secrecy. The automotive industry may not have been the only potential investor that Sweet was dealing with. At the time of his death, there was some confusion concerning the rights to Sweet's hardware and papers, held by Sweet's second wife, Violet. Bearden says that Sweet signed a number of agreements with a number of backers, and that some of these people have claimed rights to the invention. At least two of these investors say they want Sweet's laboratory equipment, inventions, and technical papers to go into a P. Ropost Floyd Sweet Museum so that other researchers could study the technology. Walter Rosenthal is trying to help all parties work towards an agreement. Despite Bearden's urging, Sweet never had the VTA certified by independent testing. He feared that his life would be snuffed out immediately if he even attempted such a thing, Bearden says.